Hey, real quick, before we start, I'm gonna be referring to a normal landing down air as a stomp to help keep it nice and distinct from rising there. Good? All right, cool, let's go. Stomp is one of Falcon's best moves, but it's so good at what it already does that I think there's a bit of tunnel vision around it. There's a lot more to down air than two frames and stomp knee, and I need to see more Falcons take advantage of it. Let's take a closer look at Rising Dare. The thing about Rising Dare is that it does a lot of odd jobs. Some of them are definitely style over substance, but a few of them cover certain blind spots in Falcon's game plan. These are important, and I want to discuss them properly. I don't want to get too sidetracked breaking down the less important applications, so I'm actually just going to sneak in a bonus mini montage at the end of the video to show them off. First, let's talk about what happens on hit. Rising Dare obviously has less frame advantage than a normal stomp, but it still confirms into need just fine. The percent ranges for your follow-ups are a little different than normal, so let's take a quick look at those. You get some nice non-tumble combos from 15 to 30. After that, you get melee-style tech situations once they start getting launched low to the ground. You can start comboing into knee at around 60. You won't have time to aim a slingshot knee or anything, so just keep it simple, and use RARs to put yourself in the right position to just buffer a simple short hop knee. 60 is also when you'll start forcing techs up on platforms. Around 70, they'll be between your short hop and full hop, so it can be kind of tricky to follow up. But this is when you unlock Footstool. Around 80, they're no longer forced to tech on most platforms, but that's fine. Because from 80 to 90, you get full hop knees for absolutely free. And once they're at 100, you might get a back air, but we're pretty much done comboing for now. Remember to fast fall right after the hit connects if you plan on comboing. The muscle memory is a little unintuitive, but you'll get it with a little practice. The thing is, even though you have some really powerful follow-ups on hit, Rising Dare is actually a defensive tool at the end of the day. It's a hurt box shift. It's hard to punish on shield. It's a close quarters disengage. It's an ambiguous cross up. And if you happen to hit them while you're doing all that, they might just die. I hope I'm not overselling it or anything, but sometimes I feel like this cheats almost as much as Terry's spot dodge attack. Remember how I said Rising Dare compensates for some of Falcon's blind spots? The two big ones are disengaging and crossing up. Every Falcon player already knows how much of a liability his backdash is and how much it limits your options in a close quarter scramble. But for the low, low price of being two or three frames slower than a spot dodge, Rising Dare can hurt buck shift above common close quarters options like jabs or grabs, and it allows you to drift about a roll's worth of distance in either direction. All of this while still threatening a kill confirm, by the way. The lack of a cross up option has always been a pretty huge weakness for Falcon in Ultimate. When he's cornered, he mostly has to commit to a full hop over them, or just kind of joust in with Nair, which is pretty good, but it's linear, and it struggles to create enough distance. Rising Dare is the shield cross-up move the dash attack never was, albeit with a pretty slow startup. I keep saying that this is strong against shield, and it is, but not in the conventional sense. It's good in the same way that Aerial Raptor Boost is good. You're still very minus, but they're locked in shield with all that shield stun while you use that same time to drift away. Remember not to fast fall unless you actually hit them. You want the extra air time so that you can drift further away. Their out of shield options just don't matter if you're out of range before they can get their hitbox out. Rising Dare is unpunishable for many characters directly out of shield. They're forced to drop shield and then use a burst option instead. Add in the cross up potential and suddenly that's a lot of new variables added to your opponent's mental stack, which takes a toll on their reaction time. And lastly, I really just want to emphasize something. This is a kill confirm, from a position and timing where Falcon has only ever threatened damage at best before. Outboxing Falcon at close quarters is generally seen as a good idea for a lot of characters. What happens when they need to respect Rising Dare as much as they'd respect a Nair 1? What does it look like if this gets popularized and people start to think it's not worth the risk to pressure Falcon up close anymore? This could legitimately change his matchup spread depending on how seriously other Falcons take it. That's all I've got for this video. Now here's that mini montage I promised. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.
Yeah, he's